You are watching a Modern Air Combat Environment tutorial video made on behalf of Battlespace Simulations by Close Air Solutions. Here is a brief overview of what we will cover in this tutorial video. The mission area in MACE is capable of changing what is displayed from a range of maps at different scales to various forms of satellite and photographic imagery. Although the mission area is a 2D projection, it represents a 3D environment, so as well as containing map and imagery data, it also contains elevation information about the terrain and the entities in the environment. The way the map changes we will discuss in a moment. First we need to tell MACE where that information is. This should be a one-off process when you set up MACE, but you may need to repeat elements of it if you acquire new mapping, imagery or elevation data. You tell MACE where the data is in the System Settings window, which can be found under the View ribbon, System Settings. This opens the system setting window, which contains many tabs. We will discuss some of the other settings in other tutorials, but for now we will concentrate on the Data Paths tab. This tab contains a number of blue buttons down the left hand side that each refer out to different types of data that MACE can accept. Map data, imagery data, vector map data, elevation data and elevation types. When you install MACE, we recommend that you make a folder containing maps, imagery and elevation data split into subfolders so that you have all of your MACE mission data in an easy to find place. First we will look at the map data. To do this we click the CADRG map data button on the left hand side. The window to the right is split into two areas, top and bottom. The top area shows the directory that MACE is looking at for the map data. The bottom shows what MACE found in that directory and any of the subdirectories contained within it. MACE supports CADRG, which is Compressed Arc Digitalized Raster Graphic Data, available from the NGA. There are two formats of the CADRG data supported by MACE, native Falcon View map data and MILSPEC CADRG data. If you have Falcon View 4.0 or newer installed, MACE will automatically find your map data, so you won't need to specify where it is. So once you know where your map data is, click the Add Directory button. Select the directory where your maps are and click OK. MACE should then populate the bottom window of the directory search results with all the valid map files. Next comes the imagery. MACE will automatically recognize an index for fast retrieval including GeoTIFF, JPEG 2000, ECW, LizardTech, Mr. Sid, and Pixel Store data. It is exactly the same process as for the maps except this time we click on the high res imagery data on the left hand side. Then add the directory that contains your imagery data. The process is the same for elevation data. MACE can load DTED data. However, if you are using VSRG, known as Versig, as your image generator, you need to use the elevation data from the Versig database. So you need to point it at the Versig Terrain folder. For a normal install, this would be in the MetaVR Versig 5 Terrain folder. There is an extra step that comes with the elevation data. Unlike the map and imagery data, the elevation data does not change automatically dependent on the zoom level. You must specify which elevation data 
mace is to use in order of priority. That is to say, if your priority one data is not available because you're outside the coverage area, MACE will then use the next type of data available in the list. To tell MACE the order of priority, you click the Elevation Types button on the left-hand side. You will see all of the elevation types listed that MACE has found from our last step. You can change the priority by clicking on the data set and clicking the Move Up and Move Down buttons on the right-hand side. Up gives it higher priority. If you're using an image generator such as Versig or VBSIG, you'll want to put that data source at the top of the list. If you don't do this, the elevation data may not match the surface of the terrain in your image generator, and you may see unusual behavior from entities thinking that ground level is somewhere other than it is displayed in the image generator. You can see what elevation data is being used by hovering the cursor over the mission area and looking at the bottom status bar. If your elevation data shows up as red, it is an indication to you that this is not your top choice in the priority list. Where it shows ELEV, or E-L-E-V, it will show the elevation of the cursor and on the right of it, in brackets, the source of the data. So here, we see the source's Versig terrain tiles and the accuracy is to 90 meters. Also, you can see the location of the cursor at any time. You can change the coordinate type by pressing the control button and F. You do this repeatedly to cycle through the available coordinate types. You can zoom in and out of the mission area using the Zoom tool, which is available in the Mission Controls tab of the top navigation bar, but also usually in the Quick toolbar. To use it, click the tool and drag a rectangle over the mission area from top left to bottom right, containing the area you wish to zoom in on. Mace will zoom in on that area. Your map will do one of two things. Either remain the same and zoom in, making the writing bigger on your map, or it may change scale. And it may change to imagery if you have zoomed in close enough. This preference is changed within the Map Options menu. To change what happens when you zoom, right-click on an empty part of the mission area and select the Map menu. Then the Options menu. If Automatic Scale on Zoom is ticked, the maps and imagery will change based on the zoom level. To zoom out, you can click the Zoom tool again, and this time drag a rectangle from bottom right to top left. The smaller the rectangle, the further you will zoom out. Once again, if the Automatic Scaling option is active, the display on the mission area will probably change to a more appropriate display for the zoomed out level, such as a larger scale aeronautical chart. The other way to zoom in and out on MACE is to use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out continuously. The direction can be reversed in the map options that you just saw. You selectively turn off the map layers or the imagery by right-clicking on the mission area and navigating to the Data Source menu. Unchecking MACE will turn off mapping. Unchecking imagery will turn off the high-res imagery that you specified in the data paths earlier. The mission area can be made to centre on various things, such as an area that encompasses all areas in the mission, or perhaps a single entity of interest. To access centering, right mouse click on the mission area and navigate to the map menu. To centre the map on the location you just clicked, click centre here. A shortcut to doing this is to simply double left click on the mission area 
and the map will centre to that point. There are two types of centering. They are centre on current AC, which means whatever platform you've selected, and centre on the mission area. Centre on the mission area will ensure the map is centred and scaled to include all active entities in the mission. You will see everything. Centre on the current AC will track the current entity you have selected. The quickest way to turn either of these off is to double click the mission area with the left mouse button. The center on functions are also available from the view tab on the top navigation ribbon. In addition to those functions, there is a center on own ship button. If you press this, it will center onto whatever platform you have attached the own ship visual to. The own ship visual is attached using the top lock icon in the view tab. If you click on a platform and then click that icon, the platform will be designated as the own ship. That means that any joysticks you've attached will be controlling that platform. The view of the image generator for that platform will remain latched, whatever other entities you click on from now on. You can easily tell which platform is top locked because in the top right hand corner of the platform icon on the mission area will be a small black circle. This will remain always whether the platform is selected or not. You can select and centre on a platform using the bottom status bar too. All the platforms in the mission are listed in the drop down to the right hand side in alphabetical order. Select the one you want and press the crosshair icon to the right of the list to centre on the selected platform. If there are many platforms in your mission, you may wish to designate some as favourites. This is done by right clicking on the platform to bring up the platform properties box and then click on the check box next to preferred platform. More on platform properties in a later tutorial. If you want to make the drop down in the bottom status bar contain only preferred platforms, then just tick the tick icon to the left where it says selected platform. It will go green and then the drop down will only contain those preferred platforms that you specified. There are a number of other tools that can be used on the mission area. They are found in the Mission Controls tab. Here you will recognize the zoom tool and you can use that in the normal way or just use your mouse scroll wheel. The tool next to it is the pan tool. Now you can normally pan the map just by holding down the left mouse button on the mission area and dragging. But in cluttered areas it could be difficult to find a clear piece of map or image to click on to get the panning going. You could end up selecting an entity instead. In this case you could use the pan tool. The default tool is the select tool with a pointer for its cursor. If you ever want to cancel a mission tool or an add function, you can just press the right mouse button anywhere on a clear part of the mission area and that will return you to the select tool default. The range and bearing tool is a useful tool, especially when conducting fires or JTAC training. To use it, select the tool. Although it is not red, when selected it is in fact a toggle on or off type button initially. So if you want to cancel out of it, just remember, right click anywhere on the map area. Click once on the map for the point that you wish to measure the range and bearing from. You will then get a red line that will show you a dynamic readout of the range and bearing of that point in both metric and imperial units. The bearing is measured in both true and magnetic in degrees and mils. If you left click again, the line will become static and the information will remain on the screen. To remove any of these lines, just right click on the line and select delete range and bearing line. The line of sight tool can come in very handy when designing missions. 
It allows you to assess dynamically how far away a site, for example a surface-to-air missile or anti-aircraft artillery system, on the ground can see an entity in the air at different altitudes. It only works for sites. If you place a site and then click on the line of sight tool and put your mouse in the area you want to check the line of sight, you can use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down the target altitude you wish to check the line of sight to. You'll get one of three indications. If the line and the number are black, then there is no line of sight to the entity at that selected altitude. If it is white, then there is a line of sight, and also the entity would be in range of the site's radar. If it is yellow, then there is a line of sight, but the entity at that altitude would not be in range of the radar. To turn off the line of sight tool, either click the line of sight icon or right mouse click anywhere on the mission area, as with all the mission tools. Here is the summary of what we covered in this tutorial video.